I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Swam Podcast. Joining me today, wow, we've got a special guest. This is someone I've wanted to talk to for a very long time. This person has deep knowledge in the greatest event that has ever been created in the sport of swimming. Of course, I'm talking about the 200 Butterfly. Today, we have two-time Olympic medalist, Haley Flickender. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? you making the time to do this um i got gotta say hey this is part of our team speedo series and you are a big part of team speedo um right yeah thanks for dropping in it, you know I've, I've we had cody on it was kind of cool to have cody on because uh cody is cody's a powerhouse he's his own media empire and um cody was uh you know the, the conversation was you know you, you you get your olympic medal and that's sort of, you know, you're, you know, you, you swim at a great college. Uh, you have a lot of great friends. You, you, you're lucky you make it all the way to the Olympics and you're, um, and then you get a medal and, and you're part of team speedo. It's sort of like you check every box. Do you feel like you've checked every box? Um, a lot of the boxes I wanted to check. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, knowing that a lot of boxes that I had growing up that I, I wanted to check off. I have. And, um, I mean, I idolized anyone wearing speedo when I was growing up and to be in that position is pretty surreal. Just for people who don't know that being, being team speedo, we grow up wearing what we wear and then we see all, you know, the speedo has always been a big marketing powerhouse and this huge presence in the sport. But when you actually become team speedo, the coolest thing I thought was the, the professionalism, it was like, you're, you're at the top rung. You know, the photo shoots are, are just ridiculous. Uh, I love them. Um, I love see, I love seeing the catalogs and all the marketing. It was, uh, it was so anyway, I, it's uh, what, what do you like about it? Um, I just won the, the team, um, or I should actually say family. It's so cool. Um, we're rather a small little team and family, which I think is really cool. And, like I said, growing up, Speedo, that was the brand. And to be in that spot is incredible. And just to be able to represent such a powerhouse brand, um, it literally what is a dream come true because that is what I had dreamed about being a young swimmer. Um, I've been around so long. Um... I, I did I, I had to I had to do a refresh on on you because it's like just just tracking from college. Uh, through your professional career, you're 27 years old. It's like, you know, it, it's, it's impressive. It, and it's, it's the, you're the type of swimmer that I think people really love, which is that you've always been improving. You've always, it's, uh, it, it feels like you've had this career where you've earned everything. And, um, but you know, having said that, I, 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 I'm going back and I'm old. So I'm going back into my database. It's like, I swear I was, I've been at meets calling calling meets when you were a child were you at ymca nationals i was yes. yeah you were at ymca nationals and i think there was one year when you were at ymca nationals and i was saying your name over and over and over <laughs> again and then i disappeared into swim so i'm on the business side and and it's like i didn't pick you back up until college so it's, you know um athens is, is is this great place it's this great lifestyle what's um I would, I would say this is where you, you became legend and, and you, you got your grit, uh, put it in your words. What, what happened there? Oh, um, the best seven years in Athens, um, went to college, uh, good, but not anything great. No one looked at me like, yeah, she's going to be an Olympian. I mean, I'm five, five I, at that point. I couldn't even, I couldn't even bench the 45 pound bar. I was so weak. Um, but I came in, I wanted to learn and I wanted to work hard. And luckily I had, um, an amazing coach and coaching staff, Jack. Uh, oh my gosh, I could go on and on about him and teammates. I was coming in right after the 2012 Olympic games and Allison Schmidt was there. Shannon Vreeland was there. 
the list goes on and on. And I had the opportunity to train with them. And I, I didn't really think much of it until I got in the pool and realized that, you know what, this could be kind of cool. And from there, I just worked really hard. And yeah, it was a great seven years. I learned a lot. I, I grew a lot um, mentally and <laughs> physically. I got a lot stronger. Um, so yeah, it was a great seven years that I'm so thankful for. It's, um, everybody loves Jack. He's the mayor of Athens. Um, he is. <laughs> we stayed in the same hotel at the, at the 16 Olympic trials and, uh, you had a great Olympic trials in 16. You made the team for the first time, but every single morning I'd go downstairs and I'd do a workout in the gym and it just do it just to get the brain chemistry in the right place. Cause you know, you might be working 18 hours that day. And, uh, and it was a bit of a slog. It was hard. It was like, I was dragging to get in that gym and work out. But every time I'd walk in, Jack would be there before me. And when I would leave, he'd still be there and he's, and he would work out with this smile on his face. And, uh, by about day five of trials, I figured it out. And it's like Jack and his crew, your crew had the best trials really of anybody else. Were you feeling that vibe during 2016 trials? Yes, of course. I mean, um, I remember this clear as day. Um, I had the hundred fly the very first day and I'm not known for the hundred fly. I'm not very good at it <laughs> at all, but I was in the semifinal and I got to watch Jay Litherland, um, make the team in the 400 I am while I was in the ready room about to go out and swim my hundred fly. And I will never forget that moment because I mean, my heart rate and just the feeling I had of happiness for him was through the roof. And I went my best. I think it's still my lifetime best in that semifinal in the hundred fly, just from watching him. And it just snowballed for us for the rest of the meet. And I think that's something that Jack created through the culture um, is to feed off of one another and feed off of each other's energy. And Jack is the leader of that. I have a story too. Um, so we swam in the Ramsey student center and we would finish practice and we would go change and we would come out and Jack is upstairs on the ellipticals doing his little elliptical. And that's, we would pass him as we walk out and we would be like, bye Jack. And he just like, bye kids. <laughs> He's on the elliptical, but yeah, he was just a leader in every single way. Um, well, I appreciate that color. Just as you were talking and answering that question, I, I popped over here and this is what I have in my database. Um, so it wasn't trials. Your, your best hunter fly 5844. This was at the Georgia Bulldog Grand Slam in 2019. Is that, is that, is that correct? It could be. Yeah. You can, I just, I just like that. You're not sure. But the like other the one, I think the other one was close. But it's hard for me to keep track for the hundred flags. I don't really keep track of it that much. So here, here's a good question for you. It's it's like a lot of people who can who who can really race at 400 meters. They train 400 meters, but really they're and you train 400 meters to do that 200 fly. Clearly, that's mm -hmm. been a part of your entire career. Um, hundred fly is like this mystery. It's like, I could never get it right. Do you feel like you can't get the hundred fly right? It's like, you've got the gears for 200 fly. You got that gear for 200 fly, but hundred flies, it's like, can't make it work. Yeah. Describe, I don't your, know what describe your hundred fly. It's literally just dive in tempo and hurts worse than the end of a 200 fly. I don't get it. <laughs> and honestly, I usually am right about a 59 in season. And that's what I take the 200 fly out in. And they don't feel the same. <laughs> so it's, it's bizarre. I don't understand. That's why but I want, that's why I wanted to that's talk okay. to you. Yeah. That's why I want to talk to you. I feel kindred spirit. I, I would, my, my, I would, I could swim. I would swim. My hundred fly time was always one second or a half second faster than when I went out in my 200 fly and it made me bitter and I never figured it out. <laughs> However, I think that with, with, um, I think that as athletes uh, mature, we're not going to say how, you know, as you, as you mature, you do figure it out. I do think that there, you, you have a window to gain some mastery and figure out that hunter fly. Phelps said the same situation, you know, he, he his, his hunter fly came later. So I'm, I'm mm -hmm. bullish on your future and hunter fly. Maybe, maybe, maybe hunter fly is going to turn <laughs> on. Thank you. I appreciate that. 
we'll see. Maybe. Just got to get that speed going. Yeah, yeah it's like you got to get the speed going. I don't know how much speed work you're doing. It, it, so can you, it, in, in terms of your training with, with, with Jack and then your transition to Bob, um, what, can, you, can you describe uh, the, the training situation? What, what changed for you? Mm, you mean like the difference between Jack and Bob with the, the, I honestly do much less power with Bob, um, than I did with Jack. Um, Jack, we did, so there were certain days where I knew they were power, um, and they were consistent power. Um, and I think that also really helped me too, uh, especially as I got older, um, cause I did not have any of that growing up. Um, so I think putting that in a little bit was good. And like, I, it wasn't a lot <laughs> and I treasured when I got to do it. Um, but yeah, I would say definitely more at Georgia than I do now. I, you know, I think if you're talking to a lot of swim nerds and you ask them uh, about these two programs, they would they would say the two programs are programs where you do honest work, hard work. Uh, I, yes. Coaches would be like, yeah, <laughs> they do honest work. And, and that checks out with Jack and it certainly checks out with Bob. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, did you, you know, if, if you, do you do a lot of speed work? You know, like how would you define a, a, a speed work power day for yourself? Um, so fast track backwards to uh, the two years leading up to the games in um, 2021. Uh, the power for us is we would do like um, – like a Monday morning sometimes, a Friday morning sometimes, where it'd be like, I don't want to say stations, but kind of stations. Like we would put on um, the parachutes or the buckets and like um, do things like that or underwater work. So it was much less yardage <laughs> than normal. Um, so we definitely, I definitely looked forward to those days. Um, so that's, I would say that's kind of what it is, is you use more, like more equipment, um, pull more water, I guess. So. And, uh, yes. And if you're, so if you're, if you're looking forward to days like that, uh, describe the pain days where you're training 400 IM, you're training 200 <laughs> fly. What's an example of, of something that, that might scare people in terms of what you've done training wise, just a, maybe a set example. Um, I mean, there are countless, mm, there are countless amounts of it. I think the thing that makes a set hard are the intervals. Um, I mean, I can do a lot. Anyone can really go and just do like yardage, you know, but I think interval is what really separates people apart. And, um, I try to forget those intervals. So I don't really have specific intervals to give you because they, they would haunt me. Um, but yeah, I think it's the sets where you're pushing yourself and doing those long yardage distances while not having much rest at all in scary intervals, I would call them. Cause I definitely look at intervals and I get a little scared. Um, so those are the ones that are like, ah. you have interval trauma. You need to clear that out. You need some, you need some interval, you need some <laughs> interval trauma therapy, some EMDR, you need to be in the chair. I do. Uh, I've been doing it for so long though. I don't know how. I'm going to need a good therapist. It's, it's, it's okay. It's all good. It's, it's, it, it, you can recover. I can tell you from the other side, you can recover from this. Uh, let's, let's, let's take a step back as we, as we sort of lead up to the transition to Bob. And I just wanted to ask you, you know, you, in, in terms of trials, you know, you made the team at 16 and uh, you went to the games I think, you know, it's, I call the first Olympics pancake Olympics for the majority. Some sewers go and they, and they win medals. And I hate those people. I, I'm so jealous of them, but I think that <laughs> going to the Olympics and finaling it's your first one is a huge milestone. Uh, I don't know when you experience that in the moment, if that, if the athlete doesn't see it that way, how did, how did you see your 16 performance seventh in the 200 meter butterfly? Um, so it was really interesting 
that you asked that question because looking back, it is really interesting to to realize what my thought process actually was. And going into the trials, my goal was to make the team, and that was that was pretty much like what I wanted to do. Obviously, I wanted to medal, but at that point, I knew I knew that doing that would be a stretch, but it it was goal. But I I was happy, um, and one was second going into semis and then made the final and then got seventh, I realized that I wasn't happy. And what I came in thinking what was my goal ended up not being the goal. Um, so I think that was really interesting to, to look back at, at it and think about it, that my perspective completely changed over the week that I was competing at the games. It's, um, yeah, it's, it, that checks out. Uh, mm-hmm. I was at a similar experience. I've talked to a lot of athletes in there. They, 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 they you, you learn a whole lot in that moment. And that's, uh, and the Olympics are so weird. That first Olympics is the weirdest experience. Uh, it seems like the next quad was the, the Haley quad. It's just like you mm-hmm. turned on. And it, you took ownership, you know, in, in the United States in the 200 butterfly. Uh, is, is there a moment or one race where it's like, wow, this was, this changed my, my brain chemistry. This changed the wiring. This is, this really made me confident. Did you have, you know, what, what was that moment early on in this past quad? I think um, I did do a lot of work um, on the mental side after 2017 worlds. Um, for a year, I worked really hard with um, a confidence coach, uh, Kristen Shevchunas. I worked with her. Um, and in 2018, when I ripped the 205 in the morning, not thinking, which is one of my best, um, definitely that morning swim was when I was like, okay, like there is the hard work starting to creep in. I knew that wasn't my potential and I knew there was much more, but I finally was seeing light of my hard work because years after years after years of hard work and everyone telling me to be patient, be patient. um, I started to see a glimpse of it and I started to have a little more confidence in myself that that swim. That was a 20587 in that prelim swim. That was a U.S. Open record. Great (laughs) swim. uh, just out of curiosity, uh, do, do you know Mary T. Maher? Are you friends with Mary T. Maher? Um, I, I know her and I've like seen her around at different events and stuff, but not like close. <clears throat> yeah. It's a, you know, she was, uh, she was the Madam Butterfly and, mm-hmm. um, she, she, you know, if you, if you talk to her and, and you did this deep dive on fly and, and hunter fly and, and how it feels, I think that you would, you would, you would understand each other very well. But when, when you did that swim, I was like, that checks out. That's, that's, uh, that we've been waiting for that for a very long time. It was a big moment. Interesting that you had a confidence coach. You were doing the work, clearly been doing the work, been doing the work all throughout college. You know, you did it through the Olympics. It's uh, it was all up here. It's all in your head. That was, it seemed to be the difference. Um, yes. The transition to, to, to Bob feels like, uh, it feels like a huge step. Mm-hmm. It's, um, it seems like it, I think to anybody who's, who's already become dominant in a particular event for, in, for their nation, it's a scary move. Um, can you talk to me? Especially a little bit of- the, or the, Olymp- the year before the year of the Olympics. Yeah. So, so what's, um, you know, it feels like you're, it feels like you're jumping off a cliff. Um, I I know Bob's got this incredible res in resume, but it's, uh, you know, what was your thought process? What were you thinking leading up to that decision? I was thinking that in order for me to be my best, I had to be confident in myself and happy. And in that moment, I was struggling with the two of those things. And I could have easily gone the easy way and stayed in Athens 
which I love so much. I was leaving the coach who officiated my wedding to go train somewhere where I've never been before. I spoke a few words to Bob (laughs) in my life and it was really scary, but I knew my goals and I knew myself well enough to know the two things that are going to make the biggest difference. And I had to do it to, to give myself the best chance to perform the way I wanted to. I, it's, it, so when I, when I, when I saw this decision to me, I was, the, what I was thinking was with that two Oh five, eight, and then, uh, you, you know, rolling into world championships, um, it's, you didn't, I, I felt like that there you needed to have a breakthrough moment. You didn't have to, but it felt like that organically there should be a breakthrough moment. And that might have been the impetus for for a move to Bob. Is does that check out? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I I've struggled my whole career with with just kind of being stuck when it comes to confidence and just having a change. I thought would be really good, um, which it was. Um, and 2019, I was very disappointed with how it was going, and I just knew I needed something. It, it, it you know, if the Olympics had gone off on time, it would have been a, it, it would have been a, uh, it seemed like a very short window. It seemed, yes. um, it's, it, 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 that moves would seem a lot scarier. Uh, and then we, we move through, this historic moment with the, with the pandemic and you know, it's like, I cannot imagine having to manage my emotions and my training and now a change. And uh, so the stress of like, wow, the Olympics are, are, are going to be right here so quickly with this change. Now you now it's another sort of emotional management of like, you, you've got to manage your, your got to manage your head through this yeah. traumatic time. Um <laughs> You know what? How was that? Were there were there some low points? Were there some points where you like just want to jump out of the pool and walk away? Uh, yeah, take me there for sure. So, I think the hardest thing for me, and I'll still stand to it today, is I believe I was in the best shape physically and mentally in March in 2020, and the sets I was doing with Bob. Like I had so much confidence, both in the, the 4am and the 200 free and the 400 free. Like I was, I think moving with Bob, it was also fresh. I wasn't thinking like I was there and Haley flicking her that I wanted to be and knew I could be was there. And then it all shut down. And that was really, really difficult for me knowing that I just made this change exactly what I needed was happening. I was doing things in practice I've never done before, never. And for me, that's hard to do. I feel like I've done almost anything, but Bob was pushing me past anything I thought I ever could do. And it all stopped. And then me being the workhorse that I am, I went months pushing every day in an endless pool with an age group team, just trying to, to do everything I could. And I pushed, I think a little too far to where it, it didn't catch up to me last year, uh, as much as it is currently, but man, it was hard. It was hard for me. It was hard for everyone. Um, yeah, to, to have all that happen all at once was, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot. We have talked off camera and we a little bit about this and I'm and uh you're alluding to it now, but it's a every and, and, and also with like our readers and our fans and our and people who who engage on, on the swim swim platform, everyone can read the room. But I haven't spoken to anybody who has medals or is an elite athlete who isn't saying, you know what, I, I the Olympics were hard enough but like coming off a pandemic into an Olympics, they're, they're struggling. They're struggling. It's this, it's, it's, it really feels like a grind right now, especially like going into a pro series, you know, with, with ISL on a powerhouse team, Cali Condors. It's um, yeah, that's uh, 
this is uh, this, there's a whole lot on your plate. Um, <laughs> what do you what do you do? What do you do for mental health? Well, you know, this is a great question for any swimmer because you can be a 12 year old and have an enormous enormous pressure on you, and it's uh, it, it, it you're always dealing with nerves and you're always dealing with family problems and school. But right now you're you're you've got everything on your shoulders. How are you dealing with it? How are you managing it? The best I can, I guess, is the best answer. Um, trying to talk about it. Um, I think talking about it to the people who know you the best is the best way. I feel like if you keep that stuff inside, it's it's no good. It'll just come out and you'll explode. Um, but yeah, I would say the biggest thing is just learning to talk about it um, to the people who you feel safe with. Um, Cause it's not easy. It's not an easy burden to carry on your shoulders when you're hurting. And um, yeah, it's really, I'm learning about it too. This is new to me. I pushed a little too far and then yes, I have two medals, but were they what I wanted? Absolutely not. So two years pushing or not even two years I've pushed since I was 12 years old. I've had to work out work everybody. So that's a lot to hold on to. I would, I would, um, I don't like sprinters. Um, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I try to be as, as, as authentic and real. Uh, I do. I love the swimming family and I love everyone. This is my tribe. This, these are my people, but I, I will look at any, I look any sprinter in the face and I'll say it publicly. I don't, there's a part of me that doesn't like you. And it's a part because they, you know, that you're oftentimes they begin out of practice. They get in later. They, they leave sooner. They, you know, they, they play games in the pool. <laughs> um, and I just, I feel like uh, I know that you had this experience. I know, especially with Bob, because I've had intimate conversations with Bob about, about philosophy and training. And he talks about it with Michael, talked about it with you. Uh, he's like, yeah, he goes, Mel, if you're going to be successful on 200 fly, you have, you, you've got to train to be the best in the 400 free or 400 I am. And mm -hmm. uh, that is a very lonely existence. <laughs> it is. It is. Um, and I won't lie about it. It's, it's very hard. And especially at my age, um, I've been doing this for a very long time. Especially if you uh, go back and dig um, how Michael Brooks coached. Um, I've been doing this stuff for a very long time. And to throw in a pandemic where you have to push yourself mentally even more than a normal year, it's a lot. And I wasn't expecting to be in this position right now <laughs> because I've never felt this way before. But um, it's something new. and. <laughs> We'll see what happens. Well, I, I have a sneaking suspicion about something I, I want to I move into, and I, and I would usually do it at the end, but I want to do it now. And it, and so you, you talk about in terms of, of of just managing mental health and managing expectations and managing managing mental health is a big topic right now. But it's a. Uh, you, I asked you before we got on. It's like, hey, do you have a, you know, have your speedo make waves moment? You know, what what is that? Because that's sort of an emotional thing. It, and you you shared with you gave me a little preview of what it was. I'm curious is 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 this is this the, is this your own personal mental health room? Your make waves moment? <laughs> am I am I am I am I hitting it correctly? Tell me yes. your tell me your make waves moment. Um, my make waves moment is my room, our suite in the Tokyo Olympic dorms in the village. And um, the dorm included myself, Allison Schmidt, Natalie Hines, Simone Manuel, Katie Ledecky, and Lily King. All of the oldest that are on the team. <laughs> and I would just say that week being with those girls, we've all been through this journey. A lot of us have been through this journey together. Allison, <laughs> she's been on this journey even longer than the rest of us. And that week, we all were able to lean on one another. And I think that is why we all do this sport is because we meet people and friends like each other that we will take past this sport. And we can lean on in the lowest of times. Um, and we get one another because we, we know what each other 
is going through to an extent and no one else is going to understand you outside of our little circle and to have one another for that whole week was something so special and something that forever I'll remember. Um, probably over the the times I've gone in in those finals, it will be those moments we had in that suite together. What did you call this suite? The old lady suite. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your your make waves moment is the old lady suite and I, and i and i appreciate the way you detailed it it's yes. uh it, it, it is let's let, let me let me uh, I, I wanted to drop it in there let's go back to i, I do want to go back to trials we talked about 16 trials but we're, we're talking you know, they call we call it 2020 trials but it's really 2021 um i walked out i had to do something i was doing some work and i and i walked out during the, you know, before the women's 400 AM final and, and the crowd pulled me back. I was literally running in a dead sprint to get back to the pool, <laughs> but it, it felt like it, it felt like one of the most exciting races, um, for, for you, you know, how, how was you, 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 I, is it, is it correct to say you trained the 400 AM really for the 200 fly? How, how was that race for you? Yeah, It was, <laughs> It was honestly one of, I've never worked a swim as hard as I worked that one. Um, uh, most of the time when I finish, you can tell I'm not really breathing hard. Well, that one, if I would have had to get out of the pool right away, I wouldn't have been able to walk. Um, I, there was a switch in me on the last 50 and I was talking to myself the amount of times Bob has told me, like, Haley, you work harder than anyone else. Like, you have this. And for how many years have I not seen that and not believed in myself? For some reason, that last 50, I was thinking of Bob and I was thinking of Jack and I was thinking of Michael. I was thinking of myself and I was thinking of what Michael, Michael, um, Michael would come to the pool on Tuesday, Thursdays in Arizona, and he, he talked to me about the practices. And I, a lot of the times was doing practices that Bob gave Michael. And I remember you're, the You're talking about Michael Phelps. Going yes. to say the last name. <laughs> yeah. And just the things Michael told me, for some reason, that last 50 clicked. And my legs started going. <laughs> they finally, they finally went like they did it. They do in practice every single day. And I somehow survived the breaststroke <laughs> and got my hand on the wall second. And oh my gosh, I was, I'm so, I can say this. I'm so proud of that race. I'm more proud of that race than any race I've ever done because it was one race that I, I gave my heart and soul to. <laughs> and I did what I do every single day. And I was just so happy that I could see that it was paying off. And you followed up in the two fly with the personal, with the personal best. Um, yes. Yeah. It's, it's a, it, it it seems it seems like the foreigner I am and two hundred fly are are uh, they're lonely. It's lonely to train for them, but it seems as though it you really do benefit from years and years and miles and miles of work. And it's like you're it, it, you you butt your head against the wall and then you have big breakthroughs. It's my opinion mm -hmm. that you're uh, you, you've got another big breakthrough in you. It's because uh, you've been you've been here for so long. But I also know the place where you're at right now, and yes. that's a, and that's a that's a tough place to be, and um and you know we're, it's we're still in it. Um, I don't know if you're it's do, do you get tripped out when you see like there's a new variant, a new COVID variant in the marketplace, you know, and, it, and you see like you know in, in in Africa we have this new variant that's coming out, and people are like, oh, it's more contagious. Yeah, yeah, it makes me nervous, um, but. I feel like I'm a little less stressed about it just because we don't have an Olympic year. <laughs> like it, that was just, that threw everything 
for a big loop, but obviously it's, it's really sad and scary. And, um, I'm actually in the Netherlands and I saw an article that those travelers traveled through the Amsterdam airport. Um, and I'm like, I'm here. Um, (laughs) so it is scary, but, um, when it comes to swimming and my life around swimming, I think it's a little different now. It's different. Let's, um, before I let you go, I have to, I have to cover a few topics and I want to nerd it up. You can say Mel push. I don't want to talk about that, but I do have to ask you, do you, I think the women's world record in the 200 fly is, is I'm a little bit suspect about that race. It's a little bit, it's a little bit, come on. Uh, what I'm alluding to is, is where, you know, the, the suspicion is that that race wasn't done clean, that, uh, that it was a performance enhanced swim, but it's, uh, it's still in the record books. Do you look at the splits for, for that swim and be like, this is what the splits have to be to do that. Is that something that, that occupies space in your head? Um, I can be honest. I've never looked at the splits. Um, and I don't want, want to really look at anyone's splits because I'm not them. And um, I Bob has expressed to me what he knows that I'm capable of doing, and I know that too. And will that break that? Not sure. But I just – I would obviously love a world record, but more importantly for me, I've swum my whole career with not reaching – what I believe I'm capable of. And I just want to do that for myself. That's all I want to do is go a time. And hopefully that will have a medal that is gold, (laughs) but I just want to have a race where I can look back and be like, that is what I trained for since I was seven years old. That is the swim and what other people do. I'm learning I can't cut and I can't control that the world record is pretty insanely fast. (laughs) Um, But yeah, obviously I would love to have that. But um, for me, I just want to swim the swim in the 200 fly that I know that I'm capable of doing. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the pressure off of you. We're going to go to the fun stuff. Uh, we we got to cover this. You, do, you, do you have a go-to speedo? What's your, what's your go-to speedo gear? You have, you know, what's, what's something you're pulling out of your bag? I absolutely love one, my nose clip because um, we need that on backstroke. And then um, two, I really enjoy pulling. Um, so my pull buoy and I love using my strap. So I guess I just gave you three, but I I feel like the pool buoy and the strap kind of go together. Um, But definitely I love pulling. So definitely those for sure. Yeah. That's what it's uh, Cody. That's what he was talking about is is power paddles. Plus he's like, he he likes those Um, favorite Cali condors teammate. Lily King. Oh, we're bestest of buds. Uh, I'm so glad she's here. We spent a lot of time together um, since we've been on trips when we were younger. So absolutely adore her. But I love all the condors. We're a big family. Everyone's jealous that if they're not on the condors. So, um, so just in terms of lifestyle, you, you know, you've, it's, you've gone from Athens to, to out to Arizona. And it's that, do you feel like an alien in a strange land or is, are you starting to... <laughs> Or do you like the culture? How's that working for you? I love the culture. It's weird though, because Athens was such a college town. And now I moved in to the fourth largest city in America, but you wouldn't really notice it because it's so spread out. And I live 25 minutes from the pool. So like, I'm not running into swimmers at the grocery store anymore. It's just weird. I feel like I'm an adult. (laughs) It's like I drive to work every day. (laughs) It sounds like you like that. I love it. I love it so much. I I feel like I have more of a balance because I'm not around all the swimmers all the time near the pool. Like I've got to drive out. I got my own grocery stores out here. I got neighbors out here that have no clue what I do. (laughs) It's really nice. Actually. What's a, if you're not, okay. What is your perfect day when you're not training? 
honestly, it's staying at home, hanging out with all the animals and my husband, ordering Uber Eats. I actually kind of low key like to go shopping just like by myself, not buy anything. I just like to walk up and down aisles of a store. So maybe take two hours to do that. But other than that, just staying home with my little family and watching movies, eating food. Is this, uh, are, would, are you going to set down roots there or would you, would you, you know, wh- wh- where's, wh- where will your home be when this professional career is over? Home will probably be Arizona. My husband, um, he's working there now and he's killing it. And, um, we both love it out there and, um, yeah, we've, we've established our roots there and I think that's where we're going to stay. If you have to, if you, if you have to do a hard set, uh, and you're like, this is, this is like, this is a gain set. I got to do this, but it's like, um, that's okay. I got this dialed in. Do you have, do you have like a go-to thing? It's like, I can do this. This is going to, this is hard, but I can do this. I can do this every day over and over and over. <laughs> um, I think anytime I go into those hard sets, I just like quickly remind myself before I jump in, like we're confidence building today. Like you got this. Does it, does it feel like taper when you're at ISL, when you're, when you're on the road competing? Oh, heck, heck yes. <laughs> This is one yes, long taper. But Bob made sure I was in shape to do all these events before I got here. <laughs> but yes, it's so nice. It's it's also cool to be around people who we only see a few times uh, a year and being able to train with them. I've done a few of uh, Lily's sets. Lily's done a few of mine. So it's really cool to be able to mix it up a little bit. In terms of uh, the, the way the, the public kind of views ISL, they're always looking at it. It's like, this has got to be a business. And the expectations are that you're three years in, it's got to be a profitable professional league, which is frankly, a lot of BS. It, it, takes, it takes years and years and years for, for professional leagues to evolve. And it sounds like Constantine, uh, the, the, who's founded it and is financing it, he's motivated to do this for a very long time. Um, it seems as though the athletes are having the most fun of anyone that are there. <laughs> it's, it seems like this, it's, it, it looks like, I know it's racing and it's fun, if it, it, but it looks like a big party. So what's yeah. going on behind the scenes? Is everybody smiling all the time? Is this, is this, is this the, is this the happy place? I would say, so we have a lot of downtime and it's a lot of us do different things. Like a group went to the, um, to the city center today. Some people are watching like movies are playing games in the team room. So I feel like everyone's just being able to, to do what they want and have like freedom and be together, um, which otherwise you wouldn't. And I think just having that like freedom is really nice. And then coming together as a team, because all of us are no longer in college. And most of us absolutely enjoy that team college racing experience. And we get to have that here except for we're not restricted as much. Like we are adults and we can do what we want. And um, I think that's what really makes this unique and fun for all of us is it's our job, but we get to do it with our friends and do what we want to do and then stand up and race. So in closing, let's look into the future. You were sports management undergrad. Is that correct? At university of Georgia finance. So you were finance. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Let me, I I take it all back. Well, so you, you know, with, with that education, with that experience that you have now, which is, uh, you know, you're, you're, you've, you've seen a lot of the world. What does your future look like? Have you thought about a career outside of the pool? Absolutely. Um, my husband's in real estate and I get to watch him do it every day and I actually sit on this call sometimes and, um, I'll ask him to take his AirPods out so I can listen to what they're talking about in their meeting today. So I really want to do real estate. I absolutely love interior design and architecture and stuff like that. And, um, Phoenix is a great area for it. And I want to help people find their homes. Um, cause I know how much I love my home. Um, and I want to help other people find theirs. So I'm super excited to be able to start that whenever I, I want to. And, I'm, I actually have my license to do so. So whenever that is, I'm ready. <laughs> that sounds like a really good plan. You got most, a lot of elites don't think that far ahead and they don't have a plan, which would surprise some people, maybe not all. 
If yeah, you, you, I have a license in Georgia too, and I didn't use it at all. Yeah. If you could go back in time and before you started your collegiate career, you know, because you, you've been at this a long time, and you could stand behind this young Haley and you could put your hands on her shoulder and you could lean down and whisper into her ear, would you, would you have, what advice would you have? I would probably tell myself that just to believe in yourself and don't be so hard on yourself. I think those would probably be the two biggest ones. You've been listening to the Swim Swam podcast. Stay tuned for new episodes every week. You can take Swim Swam podcast on the go by subscribing on your favorite podcast platform. Look for links in the description below and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos as well.